Michael, would you please give us the time and please give us the date? Yes, the time is 4.07 p.m. Pacific Time and it is January 1st, 2019. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Happy New Year to all. Happy New Year everyone in the whole world. We wish you blessings of love from all the celestials and certainly from Michael and me. And truth as well. And truth. From our wonderful friend Gabriel. Yes. Who is here today with us. Thank you so much for being here Gabriel. In our beautiful home in Mission Viejo, California, USA. We're also welcoming the Infinite Mother Spirit who is to our far left. Next to her is Gabriel our bright and morning star, Sanat Kumara Hephaestus, Gabriel, consort of Mother Venus. We're so happy to have you, Infinite Mother Spirit, and you, Gabriel. And next to him, bringing us his 23rd message to the world, and what a special one yes. on this New Year's Day, January 1st, 2019, none other than Lord Maitreya. Welcome, Lord Maitreya. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. And to our far right is none other than the wonderful celestial who is bringing her horn of plenty, her <laughs> cornucopia series, also known as Demeter in the Greek pantheon series in the Roman. Mm -hmm. We have four wonderful, wonderful friends here today. Thank you all so much for being here. We welcome you to our home and we have more than 20 other celestial supporters and workers in this magisterial mission upstairs. Maybe a little bit more detail on that. Of course, of course. Uh, the celestials are busy sending out messages of good tidings for the whole world. They are expressing their love for our planet and wishing us the most prosperity, the most healthful life that we can possibly imagine. So we thank all the celestials that are upstairs and after this meeting we will go upstairs to wish them well and receive their good tidings of joy. Okay. We have been invited to go up and spend a little time with all of them too. So that should be wonderful. Yes, thank you so much for that. An invitation from the celebration that they are having for our world. We were so surprised to have you come today. This was really a wonderful bit of news and we thank you. We were surprised to have them on December 27th yes. <laughs> after our radio program. We had a that wonderful... That was quite an adventure, friends. Oh, a thank wonderful, so wonderful day. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, thank you. Uh, we had Pato Bantan and his lovely wife Antoinette and they came at about 4.30 on December 27th. We had an interview. We went upstairs in the great room and they videotaped it and it was so lovely and so nice to see them again. And then we ran downstairs at 6 o'clock to do the radio program, our magisterial mission and our six revelation program with Nick Curto, who is past president of Urantia of Greater New York. And we also had uh, Antoinette, Antoinette and Pato, Pato mm -hmm. join us for that radio program. And it was a 
program to wish everyone a very happy new year and spread good tidings of joy. And we can't forget our wonderful producer and engineer. Yes, the, Hercules. Uh, the famed Invictus. Hercules Invictus, who has of done course. so much for us and for yes. this magisterial mission. Uh, thank you all for coming these last four or five days. We've been really blessed by your presence and your support and all of the information that has opened up to us sharing that with Pato and Antoinette and friends I'm so blessed to have written two songs while you've been here <laughs> Those Green Eyes in honor of Gabriel, Gabriel and the Spirit of Truth that Gabriel brings from the local universe father mm -hmm. and the local universe mother and a new song that I just wrote about half an hour ago <laughs> Uh, as you probably all know, uh, Diane and I had a really wonderful discussion about uh, what this new worldwide religion is all about and where our place in it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, toward the end of our discussion, I just made a comment. I said, well, you know, it's all about living a pure life and talking to God. Yes. And then sure enough, sure enough, the title, Live a Pure Life and Talk to God, came to me and I wrote a song in a matter of minutes. It just, mm -hmm. everything just came, poured out to me, talking about living a pure life and talking to God and the freedom, the freedom that comes along with that. And Maitreya, Lord Maitreya, you've talked about freedom. Uh, this being uh, transformed from a dark star mm -hmm. into freedom star. Mm -hmm. And Diane and I, I can speak for Diane, mm -hmm. we are so proud and so happy to be a part of this magisterial mission, this 10 year plan, this new worldwide religion of love that Gabriel and Mother Venus will be bringing, as well as being a part perhaps of this new music mm -hmm. that Apollo Yes. is uh, gifting us with and Dionysus and also Persephone mm -hmm. his consort yes oh. well thank you so Michael. it's been a very you're welcome mm -hmm. it's been a very very eventful uh, yes. holiday season oh my goodness yes <laughs> <laughs> I can safely say within the last five or six days <laughs> I have grown tremendously <laughs> in uh, as, a, as a spiritual seeker and as a messenger for the 10-year mm. plan, mm -hmm. magisterial mission, and this new worldwide religion of love. I just want to mention too that after we had the delightful interview with Antoinette and Pato Bantam, and then of course we had the radio program with them <laughs> at six o'clock. At eight o'clock, we were just really, really excited to welcome the Celestials for a team meeting and Pato Bantan and Antoinette were able to uh, participate with us and that was really an exciting event to have two Urantia readers with us during that wonderful meeting with the Celestials uh -huh. so yeah. it was quite an eventful day the meeting lasted over three hours it was <laughs> 11 o'clock before we were finished but we certainly covered a lot of ground. Yeah, <laughs> I'll they say had a that. lot of questions to yes, ask. Yes, they had a lot of questions I'm sure to a lot ask. Of people mm -hmm. in uh, the Ranch movement and, and you know friends that we know and people that might be listening to uh, Hercules radio program. Yes. Looking at our YouTube channel, Michael and Diane Duncan. I'm sure they have lots of questions uh -huh. that we you know hope we can provide to them some answers <laughs> we'll try provide answers. <laughs> that's right uh, I also want to mention that we just received a call from Hercules Invictus and he was saying that he is now making his home into a beautiful temple for the gods and the celestials and we just couldn't be more pleased could we oh my well, goodness Otto what a wonderful thing yes because uh, one of the messages uh, my tra Lord Maitreya one of the messages was that everyone should have a temple in their home 
that they set up a, a sacred space, a mm -hmm. temple for the gods mm -hmm. to live that pure life yes. and hopefully talk to God and receive some guidance. A, mm -hmm. a temple in each home. Yes, Maitreya's message, it's been a little while back, but mm -hmm. his message was that the body is a temple and that we should make as beautiful and as pure as possible and then make your home a temple and if you have a backyard and a front yard or a side make the whole complex as pure and beautiful as you can I know we have different parts of our home that are kind of assigned to some of the different celestials so our home is now called a temple complex we are a temple complex uh -huh. Lord Maitreya's yes, temple, complex. temple complex that's right I want to ask Maitreya a few questions that uh, the Urantia people were inquiring about and certainly um, we thought we'd just come right to you Maitreya uh -huh. <laughs> and find out directly because uh, these are very important to them. Uh, number one, I know uh, we were asked one question was, were you born on this planet Earth at any time in history? Actually taking a human body as an infant, as the story of Jesus in our Bible. That was one question that we wanted to ask you. And uh, as it's described in the Urantia book as a bestowal mission, where the celestial incarnates into a baby that's born of a mother. Yeah. Yes, Matreya, we, we would like to hear from you if you were born on this planet Earth. All right, uh, Maitreya is telling us the answer is no. He was never born as a child incarnating, incarnating as an infant on this planet and uh, did not have uh, the nativity as a Jesus did as the stories, the beautiful stories in our Bible. He did not. He is saying that when Elizabeth Clare Prophet told us, and this was back in 1976, November 21st, she told us that Maitreya and Gautama Buddha and Sanat Kumara, who is our beautiful Gabriel, who is here tonight, <laughs> um, came 90,000 years ago from Venus not that they were originally from Venus but they came from Venus as being their one of their homes we'll say we'll say that that is close to the earth they came because they were uh, told that the celestials were going to annihilate the population of the earth they had not uh, been going according to plan and so uh, something was definitely going to be done. Maitreya is saying that they were ready to leave the night before and he was in his palace on Venus with Sanat Kumara and Gautama Buddha and all of a sudden a whole stream, a parade of personalities from Venus started surrounding the palace with torches it was late at night and the torches made it very beautiful this was a team of personalities from Venus that said to these Buddhas we are going to we are not going to let you go alone there were 144,000 
who had made the decision to go to sacrifice their life to make a dark star the earth a freedom star along with this group there was a whole legion of Melchizedek's and they pledged to Sanat Kumara and the Buddhas that they would also accompany them on this perilous mission not perilous for them but certainly a long and dark journey to a dark planet so I guess you are collaborating what Elizabeth Claire Prophet from Summit University the information she gave us yes Lord Maitreya, I would like to ask, and thank you for that answer. Thank you. I wanted to ask, then, if you did not come uh, as a child or incarnate as a baby child, by what means did you incarnate on this planet when you came, or even now at a different time? Are there certain ways that you have been incarnating or certain ways you've taken on bodies or certain ways that the bodies have been created for you or provided to you for incarnations in the past incarnations during this magisterial mission could you maybe uh, give us a little insight if possible Maitreya is saying that at different times on our planet he has been known by different cultures and different names he is saying for people to investigate the Buddhist religion Maitreya Great Dell and other organizations to find the stories and the legends about all of the Buddhas that have come to this planet there are many and they have come to the earth to sacrifice themselves to help He is saying that he has taken in his period on this earth, which has been so many years, 90,000 until now, more than 90,000 now. He has taken a Chinese body and he was known in China as the Maitreya, the Buddha to come the future Buddha he says that at different times in theosophy he has been known to be called an ascended master although we must remember that not all ascended masters are of a ascendant career as listed in the Urantavok other entities can be called ascended masters from other planets and other solar systems and even other local universes and so we must be very careful when we think about ascended masters and there again uh, in the theosophy uh, it's a little different type of lineage that he has than in the Buddhist so not all of these uh, ascended masters are ascenders they are they are they're ascending but they may not be from this earth uh -huh. they may not be from this planet they may not be from this solar universe they may not be from this local universe so they may not have ascended 
on this earth sphere. As this, in the same way the as, same we, way. as we would think. We would think, oh, it's a human here on earth and they're ascending. He's saying we have to think a little bit more uh, widely that many of these celestials are coming from further away than maybe our limited minds are able to even comprehend. He says that you can think of him as a Buddha, ascended master, but even though many people only think of one Christ as we live here on this earth and we read our Bible if we are Christian, that there are many Christs. He says cosmic Christ. And he is calling himself a cosmic Christ at this time. Not before, but coming at this particular moment mm -hmm. and in this magisterial mission as a cosmic Christ. Yeah, and in a particular body at this time. And in a particular, well, he's saying, he's saying, don't forget, I, I am taking several right at this time. Several bodies. <laughs> several, yes. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, when we read about the ascended masters we must remember that we must go beyond thinking of just our earth our solar system and our local universe I think the um, usually when they talk about ascended masters these are masters who have come as babies who have been born as babies and go through the ascension scheme of the earth and gain mastership over you know the earth so you're saying that that's not always the case with beings that are called ascended masters who help the earth correct that is correct that is correct that they could be from different planets yes 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 and they could be under a mm -hmm. different type of work or ascending scheme yes and he says also we must remember that even some paradise divinities will descend and then ascend at different epochs and are labeled by the particular activity that they are doing and job and uh -huh. work for the Father. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very careful. He is saying he is a paradise son mm -hmm. He is a cosmic Christ, but he is also coming as a world teacher oh, world within teacher. that realm also. That sounds like Benjamin Krem's uh, yes. work with mm -hmm. um, Share International. Exactly. Talks about the world te and Theosophy talks about the world teacher also. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a new world teacher uh, mm -hmm. that comes periodically, mm -hmm. and even Thomas mm -hmm. Burgoyne in the light of Egypt. Yes. Talk, talks about a Christ yes. and a world teacher. Yes, mm -hmm. um, he certainly does in the light of Egypt. He suggests that about every 600 years that there is a wonderful, wondrous teacher that brings new thought to everyone, not always recognized, however, unfortunately. Lord Maitreya, are you a paradise son who has descended to the earth to help the earth uh, not exactly he's saying he's saying that he has made a few travels to other planets before coming to the earth <laughs> and Venus was one of them <laughs> uh -huh. uh, he you... has had quite a long career for the father <laughs> and Lord Maitreya I'd like to ask and thank you for these wonderful wonderful answers I'd like to ask you, uh, the bodies that you are taking during this magisterial mission, can you tell us, are we privileged to the information, how you got these bodies, how you use these bodies, how these bodies were maybe created for you or already created? Can you tell us the means by which you are incarnating into these bodies uh, that, that, that's it I think would be the question mm -hmm. 
how does the incarnation happen into these bodies? He's saying on this earth, one of the first bodies that he took was Chinese, mm. which is interesting. That is interesting. You already mentioned the Chinese body, but, yes. but one of the first. One of the first uh -huh. was Chinese. Can you give us a time period? No, he doesn't want to. Okay. But he says that that body was prepared by the, the father and the celestials. Uh, the local universe father? No. No? No. The infinite father oh. prepared for him and his so-called, we could use the word team, <laughs> oh, the infinite that was father prepared and his for him. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, was not made on the earth, of course. Was not made on, in heaven, actually. Where was it made? Maitreya. He's saying on another planet. I don't know. On another planet. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it was made well, on another planet. It was not made on this earth. Not made on this earth. Not made on this earth. On another planet. Hmm. Okay. Huh. Well, thank you so very much. Did you use that one for very long? Well, it would depend on how his time frame is and ours on what is long. <laughs> is it a body that can be used over and over? Not this one. So that one was just no. kind of like a one time? Mm -hmm. It was. Yeah. It was. Mm -hmm. So that was a very early one, I see. And the Father made that for you, Infinite Father, and his, uh, the Celestials that were working under him, I guess. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yes, of course. Uh, Lord Maitreya, uh, thank you for that answer. That's, uh, that's very, very interesting because, you know, mm -hmm. we're just trying to explore how yes. the the system works and I know you probably have to give it to us in a basic way because <laughs> I'm sure it's probably we're very well I'm sure it's probably pretty complex and oh, yeah yes, we are very <laughs> limited. Um, we're alone in this we're just depending on you so we have Lord no Montreal, idea I wanted to ask when you when you came with the 144 and the legions of Melchizedek to the earth 90,000 years ago was the Chinese body the first one that you took, or did you take a body immediately uh, when you came here? No, not immediately, he says. But he did take a Chinese take the body. Chinese. So that was. Was it an adult? It was a child. Oh, a child. Child, not a baby. He was not born here. It was a, oh, a very child. youthful. Oh, youthful. A youthful. Youthful okay. boy. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But the body was given to him from the Father. Got it. Mm -hmm. And it was not made on the earth. Mm -hmm. And it was used only one time at that particular time. Mm -hmm. I see. Did, did you work in conjunction with Gautama at that time? Yes, you did. Uh -huh. Okay, you were working with Gautama at that time. Gautama Buddha, okay. Okay. And Gautama was on the earth, or a portion of him was on the earth at that time? That you were working with him? Um, yes. Uh -huh. Yes. He was on the earth, but not in, at that time, not in a uh, physical body as oh. uh, Matreya was. Gautama was not in a physical no, body. No, he was in time. a spiritual body at that time, but he was on the earth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, was on the earth? Yes. Mm -hmm. In a spiritual body? Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, okay. May I ask Lord Maitreya? what body you are in today? Oh, well, that's very apparent. He's in his personal body. <laughs> okay. He's in his personal body today. We thank you so much for coming and sharing that beautiful body with us. Certainly as a radiant one, and he's in lots of gold and beautiful, beautiful orange. Golden orange? 
Well, the outfit is in orange. Outfit is orange. And the, but there's a lot of gold around him. <laughs> I just meant the light. That's all. Oh, the light. The light. That's all. Yes. Now Benjamin Cram said that you took a plane to London. You're saying immediately you did. So you do confirm that. Oh, that was, I think, around 1977, I think. And Elizabeth Clare Prophet said in 76 that you were going to be coming really soon. So in 77, you did come. Now that is correct. That is, that is correct. He is confirming that. And you had waited all those years to come to, to Europe, came to England, to London, the Asian section. Yes, okay. And did you actually take a job? You actually didn't. I, they think you were working, but you really weren't. I see. I understand. <laughs> you took a plane from, where did you take, from Shambhala? Yes. So was it like an astral plane? No, or he you... took a physical plane. He already had his body. He's saying that right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was in a physical body. When he took the plane, an actual plane, now, was it actually 77? Yes, it was. Yeah. And uh -huh. what was that body, uh, yes. Lord Maitreya? Was that the, uh, that was the Asian body, the uh, mi Middle Eastern body? Asian? Middle Eastern body. Middle Eastern. Mm -hmm. Now, what about this body? Because people want to know, were you born in London in a Middle Eastern body? No. No. Or anywhere else? No. No, no, you, you took a gun, you were given. He's saying, don't oh, say took. Given. He okay. said, he is given these bodies from the Father. The, the Infinite Father? Mm-hmm. All, of, is this all one? of them from the Infinite Father? No, different ones? no, but this is from the Father, Infinite Father. A Middle Eastern body, an adult, And he actually flew on a plane, and he confirms Benjamin Krem's uh, notice that he put out about that. Okay. And settled in the eastern section, near east section of London. He says he did not actually work at a draw, that people thought he was, but he actually didn't. Okay. That's interesting. So they thought you were working at a job, yes, but you really weren't. Okay, all right. Now, this body that you were given, um, what age would you say the body was when you were given this body? What, what age was the body? He's saying that he appeared as a man of about 35. But now you, you lived there for quite a while up until just the last couple of years. Uh -huh. Did the body age? Oh. No. Okay. No, the body did not age. Oh. The body did not age. The did body a, did not age. Did a lot of people see you and wonder why your body hadn't aged or are there different circumstances with uh, your appearance or how you were functioning? People really didn't notice him in that way. Uh -huh. He was more observing others. But the body did not age. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it makes me think of, uh, I do recall when they talk about St. Germain in Theosophy. Uh -huh. And St. Germain is uh, considered to be an ascended master. That a lot of times people would say his body did not seem or appear to uh -huh. age. So that's interesting that you would mention that, that your body did not age. Hmm. Uh, I, I would like to ask this, were you a vegetarian? 
Yes. <laughs> we, we're vegetarians, and we, we're very happy to hear that. <laughs> All right, so you were a vegetarian. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. I'm glad to hear that. So you actually ate. Yes, he ate. Uh-huh. He actually ate. Huh. The body did not age, but you still ate. That, that is very hard to understand, but you're saying yes. All right. Did you eat regular food? No. No, the body did not age. You did not eat regular food. Hmm. Hmm. But you did have a physical body. Uh -huh. So I'm getting that was... Hmm. If we were talking 2016 when Benjamin Cram passed away, mm -hmm. was about when the transfer was, correct? From transfer? London to here? Yes, he flew from London to here, to America. Yes. Yes, uh -huh, uh -huh. we were told. Yeah. In about 2016, right? Yes, yes, it would have been about, yeah. about, I don't know. So I'm getting 2016 from 1977 would be 39. So it was 39, 39 years ago. years ago, and yeah. he was an adult when he arrived. Yes. But the body has not aged. Right. The body is so, not aged. So, Lord Maitreya, okay. where, where is that Asian body now, since you have told us that uh, you are utilizing... Um, oh, that's the same well, Middle Eastern is, body, isn't it? Yes, it oh, is. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, that's the same Middle Eastern body. Oh, I thought you meant where was the Middle Eastern body right now while he's in his... Uh, personal That's another body. question. I <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I was I was confused. Uh, so, and then this this Hispanic body, now that you say you are using for this period of time near mm -hmm. the Los Angeles mm -hmm. area, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. stationed kind of in Irvine mm -hmm. with the mm -hmm. other and here and here, mm -hmm. Mission Viejo and Irvine. This we call the Hispanic body. Yes, we do. Uh -huh. Is that yes. what you would call it? Yes, he does. Okay. He does. Uh -huh. And this Hispanic body, are you using it, or is it, uh, is it the same type of situation as with the Middle Eastern slash Asian body that you used in London? Is it the same incarnation situation? The body is made for you by the Infinite Father, you take it, so to speak, or use it? Well, he says first, he uh, does not take the Chinese body anymore. Okay. So, he came in a plane in the Hispanic body. Oh. To America. He left London. Of course, we know Benjamin Krem passed away 2016. 2016, uh, October. October. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And is that why you left? Because Benjamin Cram passed away? No. He says no. He says he was given a new mission uh -huh. where America was to be the beacon of light for the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And he felt that his place should be in America. America, a beacon of light. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And this, is, this was a new mission? A new mission. And that mm -hmm. leads us to then mm -hmm. the magisterial mission. Yes. The local universe father gave him or offered him this position to take. He is a paradise son originally. Uh -huh. However, he has had many, many travels to many other universes before coming to Venus and then finally coming to here. Was, Lord Maitreya, was your uh, incarnation in London, was that part of the magisterial mission or was that a different project or different position or different job you were taking than this magisterial mission which we are hearing uh, started in earnest on March 20th, 2017? The mission to England and also to Scotland. England and Scotland was to be a mission to help or raise the European oh. section of the world. To raise Europe, huh? To raise Europe. This was not to be 
the beacon of light for the world. This area has not proven able to carry the torch. And he had no alternative but to join the local universe father's new mission and be the magisterial son for America. America has to be the one to carry the torch for the rest of the world. and that takes us to today. Well, he's saying, though, don't forget that he gained much experience in being in the Middle Eastern body and being with an Asian community, being in a European country, uh -huh. uh, such as England, of course, Scotland also, that this was very uh, important for him to gain this uh, experience. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. before coming I see now we are told Lord Maitreya that you still from time to time utilize the Middle Eastern body I believe it was a team meeting yes. where you were using your Middle Eastern body to uh, visit the Middle East and do some some work I believe with either some Melchizedek's or some other paradise uh, mm -hmm. celestials mm -hmm. to help, I guess, to help lay some groundwork for peace in the Middle East. Yes. Yes? Yes, he's saying yes. So that body, and I guess that leads me to that question that you thought I asked, when you are utilizing your Hispanic body or when you are in your, we call the personal body, which is kind of like mm -hmm. a... Mm -hmm. I guess it's kind of like a spiritual More body, ethereal. right? Mm -hmm. What happens to that Middle Eastern body when you are using either the Hispanic or you're not using a mm -hmm. physical body at all? First, he's saying, remember, I'm not using the Chinese body anymore. Uh -huh. Did that just dissolve? That just dissolved and went back to oh. the elements. The Middle Eastern body he's still using he's not using that as much now he has spent his time there and um, visiting the Middle East being a part of it for a while being in Europe part of that for a while and um, he won't be using the Middle Eastern body as much but, but he does say that the Middle East will bloom again and he has many wonderful ideas oh for the Middle East to bring it back to a more pristine state with happiness and joy and prosperity for everyone again. Mm -hmm. Will others then take on some of that work in the Middle East? To, oh, of course. Yeah. Of course. We have, you know, a large group that are helping him yeah. and under him. Yeah. So where is that, when you're not using that Middle Eastern body, uh, Lord Maitreya, does it just kind of exist somewhere? It, no. Um, or do you create it, or is it created each time you need it? No, How it's not it? recreated. No, it is not. Is it uh, kind of like in a, like a frozen state, or is it in a state of limbo, ready to be used? Like, I don't know, I think of sometimes like mm -hmm. clothes in a closet. Yeah, I know, I do too. <laughs> I know I did too. It is kind of something like that, he says. It's something like that, like <laughs> uh, in a closet. I know um, uh, this is just my personal knowledge that I've had before when I was uh, with them. Well, I still love their literature and I still read it, of course. I was part of the Summit Lighthouse and the brochures would talk about uh, meetings in Mount Shasta and also other areas in the world. And they had one particular meeting. It was very, very in a beautiful uh, mountain, very beautiful ceremony inside that they would go into the mountain and it was a huge room. And in the top of the ceiling, 
there, there were, um, it was like stars, but they were really uh, yellow diamonds all over the top in the shape of stars. And they had one particular ceremony where some personalities from Venus arrived. And they came in the most glorious bodies for a particular ceremony. And Saint Germain was there and Saint Germain is called an ascended master although we're learning now that he may be an aspect of Apollo. Yeah. Uh-huh. An aspect or an emanation. Uh, emanation? No. Aspect is okay. All right, aspect. And he was there and he was playing his organ and we found that a lot of the celestials are all musicians. This is what's so fascinating. So he was playing his organ and then they had a a ceremony where they had some of the guests uh, led to some large, uh, like I would say, uh, sarcophagi or something like this, you know. And when they opened them up, there were bodies laying there. And then they made a mystical, what would you say? Well, I don't know how to describe it. I'm just a layperson. I don't know. But whatever they did, the guests took on those bodies that were laying there. Uh And they were able to walk around in them and be friendly with everyone. Everyone was joyous because the experiment had worked out and the guests were actually able to talk on those bodies that had been taken on those bodies that were um, many, many hundreds of years old. Many, uh, actually maybe a thousand or so. Mm -hmm. So um, then after the ceremony, the bodies were laid again, their bodies were laid again in these, if you want to say like a casket almost, and then they uh, went on uh, in their own bodies again. But I know that was uh, through Summit Lighthouse. And uh, the I Am movement. And the I Am movement. Ray and Godfrey Ray King. Uh, uh, writing about some of this and yeah. uh, others. I think so, that's in um, Mysteries. The book yes, book. that one too, but it's also in Elizabeth Clare Prophet's brochures that I got. Is that kind of how Is it that happens kind sometimes? of how? No, he's saying no, it really okay. isn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so these bodies are mostly prepared then for all of you to, to, prepared. to mm-hmm. enter. Not on the earth, though. They're not prepared on the earth. earth. They are uh, given to him by the Father. They are not prepared on the earth. And they are made by the celestials. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that way then. Okay, all right. Well, I apologize. I just thought I would bring that out since I had read about that in some of the literature. All right, then we'll proceed. (laughs) And there are some questions from others. Uh There are some questions about... Well, one of the questions was... uh, do you ever do you ever overtake someone's consciousness? Do you ever overtake a body that someone is inhabiting, step them aside or step their consciousness aside and take on that body? Is there ever a situation like that that occurs? He is saying that he does not, that he has been given this body as one would be given clothes or an angel okay. given clothes because so, they are given clothes. He is given the body as clothes, he inhabits the body, and then he um, sets it aside and then takes on whatever he wants. Uh, It is his choice, but he is given the bodies made by the Father. Oh, uh, he gets to choose his bodies. Well, well, not exactly, no. No? After he is given the bodies, he makes his choice of what he wants to, uh, what activity he wants to do and which one to put on. Okay, so you're given a wardrobe. Yes, a wardrobe of bodies. Okay. <laughs> I know that may sound strange. But well, we, we choose, our, our, <laughs> we choose our, <laughs> our outfit for the day, right? I guess we do. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lord Matreya, uh, I'm We don't mean it. to be, um, we, we just don't know how else to deal with this because it's so, so beyond our comprehension in any way but so thank the, you for sharing what you can prepared on the earth no they are not the bodies are kind of constructed or made by for the father you. infinite father and the celestial so there are a number of them possibly available for you to uh, take uh-huh. and after you've been given them that you it's your choice what activity 
that you use them and where you go and what uh, what you want to accomplish. Can I uh -huh. ask you, Lord yeah, Maitreya, I, I see that part. That part I can understand. <laughs> I wonder why why the Hispanic body. I'm sure people would would want to know, you know, why not a uh, why not a body, you know, like a Caucasian body or an African American body or mm -hmm. a Chinese body at this time. Mm -hmm. um, why the Hispanic? He's saying for America, and he has come to America. He has come to represent the beacon of light for the Universal Father in America now. That he feels that the voice of the Hispanic is the one that he needs to proclaim the loudest for America. He is in sympathy with everyone, and he loves everyone. And he wants everyone to join in his magisterial mission with prosperity and happiness. But he feels that at this time in America, and especially here in California, that the Hispanic body is the one he wants best to use at this time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lord Maitreya, for answering these questions. I'm not, I wasn't sure that these kinds of questions could be answered. I appreciate that. No, I wasn't sure. either. <laughs> Just, Thank you know, you. <laughs> some of these questions have, have come up lately. And, yes. Uh, I appreciate you answering them, and I'm, I'm sure there's probably more to it. Mm -hmm. than that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I do appreciate uh, appreciate you answering these questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Thank you. So, we definitely have learned you have not been born as a baby on the planet Earth. No. Have you ever been born as a baby on another planet? He's saying no, he really doesn't uh, take that okay. type of those are called in the um, ranch book bestowals. Yeah, son. he says he really doesn't take that type of uh, bestowals. No? Situation. Hasn't no. Done that? No, he does not. So, Lord Maitreya, um, so you, in your work with the Father and the Fathers, you have not yet, or you have not had an incarnation on any of the planets as a baby. Um, no, he's saying not, not really. That's not really the way that he works. That he most of your work is works. with, uh, like, uh, more uh, maybe youth maybe or a, adult? Um, a a young person, young person that we would maybe consider almost a child, mm -hmm. but not a baby and not a uh, situation like that. No. Is your have you taken incarnations on places outside of? Our solar system outside of our local oh, yes. system outside oh, of our local universe. Most, most definitely. How about outside of our super universe? No. So it's no, mostly within our super universe that you've done. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. Yes. Mostly within our local universe. No, but lo mostly within the, the super the universe super of universe. Orvanton. Yes. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yes. Of course. Wow. So you. Okay. Can you give us? I know this is kind of a silly question, or maybe a silly question, Lord Maitreya, but um, is there a time when you were born? Can you give us, like in Earth years, how old you are? No, he really can't. No? I know it's probably a silly question. Well, it's not a silly question, but uh, he would prefer not to do that. Okay. Can you tell us maybe about how many incarnations you've had on places throughout the super universe in your career? He does not want to do Okay, all right. Yeah. Sorry. No problem. I'm sorry. No problem. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us? Yes, he does. Okay. Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. um, and please forgive me if these questions have been tiresome for you. Or oh, not curious. at all. He's saying no, no. Okay. He's always eager. He's always eager to help. He says he wants to be a beacon of light for all people of the world. 
all people. He does not want to leave out any, any person in the world and he loves everyone. But he has a job to do and he is trying to make the best use of what uh, experience he has now on this earth to bring about some monumental changes. He would like to have everyone have a voice in their destiny. He is particularly interested in America at this time. But he is certainly representative of everybody. Many countries are prosperous and doing well and he wants them to be the backbone of his new policies and help countries that need so desperately the things that he can give. Mm -hmm. He wants to give basics to all people. Food, clothing, permanent housing, happiness, joy, freedom to express themselves in any way that they feel they need to. Freedom of religion and so forth. Maitreya, Maitreya. Well you, you are really the nuts and bolts guy. I know that you have Melchizedek's, we've had them, we've talked to them before and so many of them are involved in social programs and all of these things but, but we're told that they really can't do their full work until there's more of a measure of peace. Mm -hmm. Do you see that measure of peace coming soon? Not yet, not yet, uh -huh. not yet. We were blessed, uh, Lord Maitreya, to hear your sixth message uh, in your sixth message you told us that the universal father is very very interested in this project and that a measure of peace would be required we were told that the universal father would be instrumental in helping us to attain this measure of world peace so we're, we're happy to hear that. The Universal Father has told us to use the Urantia book as the basis for our work in our ministry, which we're very happy to do. So we thank you for uh, helping us to connect with the Universal Father and to attain this measure of world peace that's so necessary for all of your workers to do their jobs. We appreciate that, Lord Maitreya. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we have friends that join us, as you know, the local universe father urged us to begin a worldwide prayer circle for world peace, mm -hmm. and it was either June or July of 2016, mm -hmm. and we've done that almost every month. We have people praying for world peace, so, so we have friends that are contributing uh, on that level, and we're so happy to hear about things be being a little bit better in uh, the Korean Peninsula for peace and a little bit more world peace happening throughout the world so we're, we're happy but we know it, it'll take a while. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Uh, Lord Maitreya, uh, I know that today is the first day of the new year. This is 2019 now. We really are approaching the March anniversary of our magisterial mission 
that will make it two years yes. that we have two been involved years. with you and the Celestials in this mission and it's been a very exciting journey. This year coming up, what do you want people to do to help you to, to make this dream that you have, and I know you have this dream, come true, to make everyone in the world uh, have more abundance and prosperity and since we are on a materialistic planet we certainly don't want to see anyone suffer or uh, have not enough food or, or whatever basic necessities of course what can we do? what can we do? what can we do? what, what do you want us to do? the first thing he's saying is he wants us to be more frugal frugal well that's an interesting comment coming from a celestial <gasps> you want everybody? us to me do you mean everyone you're saying I mean you're going to be bringing a lot of prosperity but you're telling us to be more frugal at this time yes he's saying yes oh. he's saying be more frugal now and give of your excess to others he says that most people are endowed with abundance in countries such as America great, great countries beyond our shores in Europe where the people have more than they need he's saying begin to live more frugally so that you can share more of what you have with someone else so you can share so you can share. Well, you know, um, Matreya, that reminds me of a saying that I've always heard, and that is, a dinner that is enough is a feast. We don't need excess. Yeah, enough is a feast. Enough is a feast, yes. Thank you, Michael. Uh -huh. Is this the kind of thing that you're talking about? Yes, he's saying yes. He's saying that he feels that Ceres is here to benefit us by bringing more nutritious food to the earth and making the soil more nutritious but he's saying the people must be more careful not waste so much and if they do have excess money to use it to give food to others be more frugal yourself so you can share with others and, and he is also making another point that goes yes. along with this uh -huh. and he's saying don't forget that true happiness and prosperity lies in your giving to someone else and making sure that they have all the basics and maybe some of the luxuries too that that will make you more happy and more healthy and more pleased with your own world than using all the excess up for yourself hmm. share with others and make a happy family around the world So I guess your message is to be more frugal with what we have so we can share the excess with others. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see. Okay. I understand. Thank you, Lord Matreya, for your message for the world. That is a very interesting one. <laughs> yes. but, I, but I'm sure that you're right. In the end, you will give us more prosperity for everyone, including us, here in America where we have so much abundance. But, but you're right. You're right. I remember you telling us, <laughs> Lord Maitreya, you, you told us, you said that there will be a time where the people who share the most will have the most accolades or something like that. Mm -hmm. That, mm -hmm. that yes. sharing... Hmm, there will be prizes for sharing. I'm, I'm trying to get it. Yes, out. I remember. I remember. But it's been a long time yes. and I'm, I'm having a hard time too. 
bringing that back. Yes, I remember, I think that was part of uh, one of your plans you gave us, and I'm sorry, it's not, the book is not right in front of us to go back, but, but yes, I remember too, that there will be rewards. Yes. People will be rewarded for the sharing that they do, and the people that share the most will feel the happiest and most joy. Something like that. Yes, and that they will be rewarded. And I think this is something that, uh, that we need to do anyway yes. to bring more happiness to ourselves because true lasting happiness is only when you share, share it with others. Yes. I gave uh, the other day, uh, before we broke for mm -hmm. our holiday vacation at the school, there's a gentleman that works with us. He's one of the night cleaners, as a matter of fact, a Hispanic gentleman. Uh, he takes he takes truckloads of items to Tijuana. Oh, how wonderful! So I was helping him load a couch. Oh, uh, we loaded a, a really nice couch <laughs> uh, to go to Tijuana, uh -huh. uh, and I gave him some. I gave him some of our shoes and some mm -hmm. of our things we were going to yeah, give to we, the Goodwill. We had quite a few sacks. <laughs> um, but this gentleman does it by himself. Oh my. He, I, I said, well, let me help you lift this couch. He was mm -hmm. going to do it himself. Oh. He said, well, he has experience as a mover, you know, but I helped him. But this gentleman, he gathers all these items and he takes them down to Tijuana. And this is one oh. person. And I'm that sure a lot of people benefit from just what he does mm -hmm. you know? surely because he's doing it consistently yeah you see so, that's the thing yes. and and you oh, and I I mean we've taken we've mm -hmm. taken three children oh whose, oh dear <laughs> whose mother passed away and we've yes. raised them mm -hmm. for we've, 12 years we've given of our time and our talents and yes. our energy sacrifice mm -hmm. uh, but the fulfillment yes is lasting is is tremendous and to see them yes to see them flourishing and become community members mm -hmm. and yes. knowing that we did a service for our family is um, very satisfying uh, and it has helped us to grow in ways that we can't even imagine <laughs> mm -hmm. absolutely well I thank you Matreya I thank you Gadriel uh, does Gadriel want to speak no infinite mother uh, Gabriel uh, Gabriel Gabriel do you wish to speak no uh, Ceres do you wish, do wish to speak she does. She does. Thank you, Matreya. We're so happy you were with us. Thank you so much. Oh, we have Alex here. Alexander, our 13-year-old son. Do you have a, a question for either the Infinite Mother or Gabriel? Or we have Matreya, Lord Matreya, or Ceres. <laughs> and by the way, this is one of the children I was just talking about. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is Alexander. That we took. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. He's the youngest of the three. Yes, youngest mm -hmm. of the three. Do you have a question, darling, for any of the Celestials tonight? Because it is tonight now, and it is the new year. Today is the first day. How are you? I, I don't think anyone's asked you that. Okay. All right. Infinite Mother, how are you? She says she's joyful and happy. Everything is good. She sees no... Uh, nothing to say any different she is at peace okay and then we have Gabriel how are you he is fine he's sending out message of love to us for the new year giving of his heart and also the love of his consort Venus to everyone in the world Matreya how are you he says he is um, um, he'll think about that. <laughs> I'm not getting anything too much from him. Matreya, are you happy right now? He's saying no. He said he didn't want to say it, but he's not. Is it a difficult job? Yes, it's a very difficult job. Is it a difficult job because you're in America? No. It's a difficult situation right now for him. You are in a job right now? Yes, he is. Fine. You are actually working? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have a question for me? Uh, yes. Are you trying to get prohibition or are you at another matter at the moment? Oh. Are you talking about um, alcohol prohibition? Alcohol prohibition? Y yes, that sort of thing. Oh. I'm oh. just trying to check. Yes, he says yes, very much so. Yes, he says that uh, the purity of the body is something that he and Ceres are particularly uh, working on. Okay, so... That's going to happen. 
Oh, he says absolutely, but it will be a long, long time. <laughs> Prohibition. Uh huh. Yes. I do uh -huh. have a question for the infant mother. Yes. We need please. to see how Ceres is doing now. Also. Oh, Ceres, let's don't forget her first. All right. Ceres, how are you, darling? She says she is joyful, and her situation is excellent because she is officiating worship services for the Universal Father. And they are always, always the most joyful possible. They are always, always uplifting. For the uh, Universal Father, right? Yes, Universal uh, Father. Yes, Alex, right. go ahead. Infinite with Mother, the, right? Mother? Yes, with the uni Infinite Mother. Infinite right Mother. Yes. Um, uh -huh. I just had a question. Yes. Uh, well, people celebrate the 100th anniversary of the 1920s. I just wonder, or will they just not care? She's saying probably most people won't care, but she says here in this house, we will. <laughs> we will. We'll celebrate it. Alex loves the 1920s, and uh, also, I'm sure that we'll have a celebration for him. Do you think I should continue um, Charlie Cash or move on to the immortals? Move on to the immortals, she says. And also, she says, don't forget. The year 2020, that is a year that she will celebrate for the earth because she's sending her beautiful paradise daughter Venus incarnating in a human body the, um, and she's going to be visiting every church and temple in the whole world and also every chamber in the heart of every single person to bring them joy and messages of love. Anyway. So we will be celebrating 2020, yeah, won't we, Michael? That's right. The mother is coming. It'll be March the 20th, and, and uh, that will be a very exciting event. Do you personally like the immortals? Yeah. Yeah. Um, or all of you? She says that the Universal Father has some ideas for you, and um, she'll pass them on later. Yeah. Uh, for those listening, uh, this what he's talking about, the immortals, is a uh, story, explain. story yes. that he's working on. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, Ceres. Ceres, did you want to speak more? Yes, she, yes, did. she did. Okay. She did. Thank you, Alexander. Ceres did. Ceres wants people to be more naturalistic in their choice of foods this year. Choose natural whole foods. Mm. She wants you to eat a whole avocado, <laughs> a whole orange, a whole banana, a whole tomato, and make more meals with foods just as they are in their natural Wrapping, yeah. God-given wrapping. She says, Matreya wants you to be more frugal with your abundance. She wants you to choose foods that are more simple. So frugality from Matreya, simplicity from our beautiful series. She says, to choose foods that do not require a lot of cooking that do not require white flour, white sugar, salt. She says, just eat them as they are. You don't need a thing to go with them, <laughs> and they're more healthy. And she's saying, just eat an apple instead of that apple pie. She says, try it. She said, this will bring about more abundance for everyone. And she says, better health. Well, she wants less to wa less waste, as uh, Madrea oh, does. Right. Less waste. She's saying that people, especially in America, have a huge waste of food. Just absolutely huge. That we throw away so much precious food. And if we started eating food in their original containers, <laughs> we wouldn't use so much plastic. And we wouldn't need so much overload of salt and sugar and things like that in our in our system that brings about problems. So she's saying be more simplistic in your preparing meals, 
Maitreya is saying, be more frugal with your resources. The Infinite Mother is saying, she wishes good tidings for everyone and happiness and joy. Thank you. And Gabriel, do you want to speak? No, no. I know that you bring truth, but I'm, I'm sure you will be doing that at another time, so we thank you for coming. We thank you all for coming. Are you through? Series? Matreya. Thank you, Lord Matreya, for bringing all of these wonderful ideas to us, and we will be thoughtful about uh, what you would like us to think about. Thank you, Infinite Mother, for bringing everyone here. Thank you so much for all of you. This is the most glorious day to have a gathering with you. And after this meeting, we will be adjourning. And all of us, including Alex, will be going up in the great room to see the other celestials who've been waiting there so patiently for us. We've had a little longer meeting than we thought we would. So I wish that all of you were here with us. Pato Bantan and Antoinette were able to enjoy meeting some of you. Now we will leave and go upstairs and see what they have prepared for us. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. 2019. 2019. God bless you all and thank you all so much for coming, <laughs> Celestials. And we hope that you will continue to bless our world, do your tremendous work on our planet, and please let us know if there's anything we can do to help out in that process, we'll try to be more frugal, and we'll, we have tried to be more frugal. Yes, we have, and simplistic in our And we've foods. tried to eat better whole, better fresh, better whole, fresh foods. Simply uh -huh. prepared foods. Exactly. Yeah. So thank you, Infinite Mother. Thank you, Gabriel. Say hello to Venus for us, Gabriel. Yes. And Infinite Mother, say hello to Infinite Father for us. Yes. Maitreya, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And Ceres, Demeter, thank you. God bless you all. God, God bless, bless your work. you all. Thank you. Good night. They have gone upstairs. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll go. They want you to sing something. Is there some little song you could sing for the new year? This is the new year. It's January 1st, 2019. We are gathering in the great room with the Celestials. We have how many here? 24. 24. Thank you for coming. I know you're coming to wish us a happy new year and give good tidings to us, and we give it to you. We thank you for coming, for joining in this glorious day, and this second year is now over for our magisterial mission in March, and we'll begin our third year. Uh, Michael is going to sing for you. We have just been talking to Lord Maitreya, particularly on his 23rd message for the world. And this song is for all of you. And I know a lot of you are musicians, and therefore that you will also give us music this year in different ways, we've found out. We'd like to say Happy New Year, 2019. Yes. Lord Maitreya. We just had a wonderful meeting with you and we thank you so much for all of the wonderful work you have done for our planet, all of the wonderful work you are doing and will do. We praise you and we thank you coming as the Cosmic Christ. All of humanity, rejoice. Yes. And Alexander, will you announce who you are, your name, and wish everyone a happy new year? Alexander Wilson the later author of The Immortals and various other books okay. done by my author, mm -hmm. William Anderson, mm -hmm. and also the um, director of uh, Charlie Cat. And do you wish everyone here a Happy New Year? Happy New Year. Thank you. <laughs> Lord Maitreya. Thank you. Cosmic Christ. Okay. Lord Maitreya is coming as the Christ. Lord Maitreya's coming as the Christ, Lord of light within our sight, coming as the Christ. Rejoice, yes, 
all of humanity rejoice, for Lord Maitreya has come as the Cosmic Christ, sent by Sanat Kumara, also known as Gabriel, the bright and morning star, and his consort, Blessed Mother Venus, Maitreya has joined with celestial supporters and workers to fulfill a magisterial mission on Earth, which began in earnest on March 20th, 2017. Lord Maitreya's mission will unfailingly transform our dark star into freedom star to become a shining beacon of light, radiating the universal Father's light and love throughout the universe of universes. Lord Maitreya, for this tremendous work, we thank you. Lord Maitreya's coming as the Christ. Lord Maitreya's coming as the Christ. Lord of light within our sight. Coming as the Christ. Rejoice. And we also say for this new year, we say world peace. World peace. World peace. World peace. Thank you all for coming. Thank God you so much. God bless the world. They are still here. They want to chat? Do they want to talk? No. Just um, close your eyes and just be with them for a few minutes. They're saying, joy to the freedom star. Amen. Amen. Okay. They're not gone, but we will go. A little while. No. Do you want us to stay? No. They'll be here for a little while. Okay. My train.